building this up QR thermostat kit. We have three diodes in the kit. This one is the Zener diode and I can read 5V1, 5.1 volts on it and this fits here where it says ZD1. So I bend the wires Make sure it's lined up so that the white line corresponds to the black stripe and that's in a diode. Like that. Bend the wires apart underneath. Place it on the bench. Clean the soldering iron tip. And solder it in place like that. The wires the diodes again bend the wires, line it up so that the black stripe on the diode matches the white stripe on the printed circuit board, and the holes are quite fine, difficult to line up. There we are. That's the diode in place here. The black stripe at this end lining up with the white stripe on the printed circuit board. Bend the wires apart slightly like that. Put it on the bench. Solder the wires. Snip them off, diode in place. The next diode, bend the wires, match up the white stripe of the diode here with the black stripe on the glass body of the diode. Push the wires through. Press it down flat, bend the wires apart, place it on the bench, solder the joints, making sure you put the iron tip onto the copper pad, touching the wire, then feed the solder in, just enough to make a joint, like that. Snip off the wires. That's the two diodes and the Zener diode fitted to the ball board. Now we do the same with the resistors. The instructions tell us that R1 and R2 are 1K, 1 kilo ohm in value, and that the colours representing this value are brown, black, and red. So we find amongst these resistors the ones which are labelled brown, black, red. There's one, and there's another one. We bend the wires, just as we did with the diodes. We locate R1 on the printed circuit board, and R2. I'm going to do R2 first. That's R2. It doesn't matter which way around the diode goes, so that's, oh, sorry, the resistor, so that's fine. Bend the legs apart. Take the other die uh, resistor. Bend the wires. Feed them through the holes. Bend the wires apart. Now we've got two resistors fitted to the board. Press the board on the bench. Solder the wires to the copper pads. Snip off the wires. So that's R1 and R2 fitted to our thermostat board. R3 and R4 are listed as being 
10k resistors, that's 10 kilo ohms, and the colours are bl brown, black, and orange. We locate the resistors with those colours. There's one. We bend the legs. We found we find R3 on the board, which is here. Place that in position. Push the wires through. Bend the wires apart slightly. Do the 10k resistor. Bend the wires. Locate R4, which is here on the board. Put the wires through. Press it flat. Bend the wires apart. It doesn't matter which way around the resistor goes. Either way will do. Place the board on the bench. Clean the iron tip. Solder the wires to the copper pads. One, two, three, four. Snip the wires. And that's another two resistors fitted. R8 here is listed as zero. This means it's a zero ohm. It's just actually a link wire, but it's in the shape of a diode just to make it easy to handle. Bend the wires, place it in position R8, hold it flat on the board, bend the wires apart. R5 is listed as 120K, 120K, with the colours brown, red, yellow. This is this one. Bend the wires. Place it in position labelled R5 on the board. There. Hold it flat. Bend the wires apart. And solder. R6 is listed as 56K, 56K, with the colours green, blue and orange. That's that one. Bend the wires. Put it in position R6 on the printed circuit board. Hold it flat. Bend the wires apart. So, resistor R7 which is located here near the edge of the board is listed as 6M8, that's 6.8 mega ohms and the colours are blue, grey and green which is that one. Bend the wires push them through the holes in the board at position R7, hold it flat bend the wires apart and then solder them. The IC Integrated circuit is in conductive foam rubber to protect it from static electricity. I've made sure that I've earthed myself so I'm not carrying a charge, so I can safely take it out of the foam. I can put it on the bench like this and gently press it so that the legs become parallel, which makes it easy to fit the printed circuit board like this you can see that there is a notch on the IC at the end here. That notch lines up with a marking here on the board which is next to pin 1 on that corner there. So we fit the IC into the holes there, hold it flat against the board, flick a couple of the corner pins over to hold it in place and then solder it. C1 and C2 are listed as 100 nanofarad marked 104. They're very tiny, you won't be able to see in the photograph, but that is labelled 104. That's C1 and it goes in there. Hold it with one finger, bend the legs apart under the board just to keep it in place. Don't bend them too much. 
C2, also labelled 104, goes in C2 position here, bend the legs and solder it. The transistor fits here. It's listed as a BC547. Here it is. And it's fitted so that the flat face of the transistor is facing us here. We push the leg into the holes in the board, just spreading them a little bit like this. Push it down, not all the way because we don't want to damage it, and that will stay there by itself while we solder it. The LED that we supplied with is quite small, so I'm going to show you a larger clear colourless LED so that you can see inside it. And you can see on the, the left hand side is a, a large anvil shape inside the LED. That's what you're looking for. That is the cathode and that is represented by a bar with a triangle pointing at it on the wiring diagram. So that anvil shape is the cathode and that's what we're looking for in the small red one which is supplied which is much more difficult to see. However, I can see it with the naked eye so I'm going to place this so that that anvil goes to that white marking there on the printed circuit board. And the anvil on this particular LED is the one, if I hold it against my hand, with the shortest leg. So we place that in the, next to the transistor through the holes in the board here. You can see the longer wire is on the right, the short wire denoting the cathode is on the left. I press it down to the board and then I just tweak the wires out to hold it in position so that I can solder it. I've now also fitted the potentiometer as you can see I've soldered that on. Now we need to fit two capacitors. Capacitor C3 is listed as 100 microfarad. You can't quite see the diagram because it's up in the air but it's listed as 100 microfarad. That's this one. You note that there is a stripe on the side here. That stripe corresponds with a hole which is not marked positive. In other words, the side of the capacitor that does not have the stripe, this side, fits into the hole with a plus sign, like so. So the stripe is on this side, and the side without the stripe is here, where there is a plus sign on the board. We spread the legs. Capacitor C4 is listed as 470 microfarad. Again it has a stripe on it, and the wire at the opposite side from the stripe is the one which goes to the positive marking on the board and that is this one here. The positive mark is on the board there so that wire goes there. So the positive is here and the stripe is on this side here. Hold it down, bend the wires out so that we can Solder it more easily. Put it on the workbench. Take the solder. Put the iron on the pad, touching the wire. Bring the solder in, and that's it. Snip the wires off. Job done. So here is the completed thermostat. I've soldered all the parts of the board. I've connected the temperature sensor, the thermistor here. I've connected the power supply and I've looped the power supply through to the normally closed contact of the relay as well. And the relay is connected to the fan 
and the fan, black wire, comes down to the negative supply to the board here. So now if I take a source of heat, my soldering iron, hold it close to the temperature sensor and the fan comes on. The fan is blowing cold air at the temperature sensor and it cools the temperature sensor down so it switches off again. Here we go again. Warm up the sensor with the soldering iron. The fan comes on cools the sensor down and switches off again and you'll notice it's actually working in reverse because the LED here is actually lit and so if I just shield that so you can see it when I bring the iron over and warm that up that LED will actually go out when the relay switch is over. There you are, the LED is out, the fan is running, the relay is switched over, it's cooling down the temperature sensor and the relay clicks over and the LED comes back on again.